Hi everyone, I wanted to come on here today and do a video about BRCA, the BRCA mutation, and finding out that you're positive for it. I did a series of videos on this subject and relating to like surgeries regard around this subject a while ago, a couple of years ago, and I decided to uh, not make those public anymore. I now have them marked as closed. The reason that I did this is because there's a lot of personal information in those videos about my boobies and also <laughs> I felt like if anyone wanted to ask me questions about this subject it's a very personal matter and I wanted people to feel like those videos were a safe place to ask questions I didn't want people to feel like oh you know kind of hesitant to ask a question because it's on a public forum so I closed those videos they're still available if you have the link for you to view them so if you feel like you would benefit from watching those videos message me and I can give you a link. The people who I feel would probably benefit are those who are BRCA positive themselves or who think they may be. Um, someone who maybe has breast cancer and is looking to go through reconstructive surgery or maybe a family member. If you are a family, family member of someone who has uh, one of those issues, um, these videos might be very useful for you. So just drop me a line and let me know why you think that, you know, those videos would be of use to you and I can share with you the link. I'm more than happy to do that. This video, however, is going to be public and just some more general information about being BRCA positive and um, what you can do once you find out that you are, what the testing entails and how you know whether or not you need to be tested for this. That Those are the kind of things that this video is going to cover. So let's get started. The BRCA mutation is a change in either the BRCA1 or the BRCA2 gene, which causes it to work improperly. Uh, this malfunction is going to cause it to be a lot more likely for someone who has it to develop breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and other, other various cancers. Um, and mostly breast and ovarian are the main ones. And so I found out that I was, I was positive for the mutation. And what I had to do in order to find that out was I had to be tested. Now the test is super simple. It's either a blood test or they take your saliva and they send it to the lab and you find out. Um, I know it's a little daunting to, to think about a potential positive diagnosis, but it's, it's knowledge that you can use to your advantage because then you know you know what your health risks are and what your future may hold and so it, it it's it's scary but it's positive at the same time it's it's empowering at the same time um, how did I know that I should be tested for this? Well, the reason I knew is because my dad got tested and he was positive. So that left a 50% chance that I would be positive as well. The reason my dad knew he needed to be tested is because we had a extensive family history of both breast and ovarian cancer. And so he knew he could be a carrier for it. He got tested really not for himself, but for because he has three daughters and he knew that this could really affect our lives. So he went in and he got tested, found out he was positive. So then we, all three of us, knew there was a 50% chance that we would be positive as well. Now, out of the three of us, you may be wondering, you know, like which ones of us were positive or how many of us were positive, how many of us were negative. One of our sisters is negative and then me and the other sister are positive. So two of us are positive, one of us is negative. It's just kind of interesting to me to know these um, the, the, these facts, like the way that genetics are passed on is so intriguing to me, especially because of this. So anyway, how you're going to know whether or not you should be tested for this mutation is based on your family history or if you're fortunate enough that one of your parents had been tested for the mutation, then you would know for sure. If one of them had tested positive, you would just know, okay, I need to get tested because there is a pretty good likelihood that I could have this as well. Um, if you look in your family history and you find a lot of ovarian or breast cancer survivors or uh, sufferers, people who may have died from either of those cancers, you're gonna know that this could be something that runs in your family and you're going to want to try to get tested. Um, I was actually fortunate in that my insurance covered this testing. Um, I'm not sure if all insurances do. You're going to have to check in with that, but I think it's something really worth looking into because I think that, like I said before, having this knowledge is definitely a powerful thing and it's, it's good to know moving forward. A lot of people wonder what happens after you get tested and if you find out you're positive, then what? 
Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, it's kind of up to you, your genetic counselor, and your doctor to discuss what you should do moving forward. It's a personal decision, very personal, and I really can't trust that, uh, stress that enough that it is so extremely personal. Now, when I sat down with my genetic counselor and doctor, they felt it was an there was an 85 to 90 percent chance that I would develop breast cancer. They also felt that there was a very high likelihood I would develop ovarian cancer as well because one of my aunts died of it at age 45, um, and she was diagnosed at age 40, very young. Um, and so they felt that this was a pressing concern for me and that if I was willing, it would be good to have the preventative surgeries. I was willing because I looked, I weighed my options. My options basically were being screened every six months. Um, and they said because of the nature of my breasts, they would probably be, you know, sending things off for biopsy every six months. And every six months I'd be holding my breath that I didn't have breast cancer. I decided I did not want to live that way. I decided that although it was scary, I wanted to do the, the surgery. I wanted to get the mastectomy and I wanted to do the reconstruction immediately and not have to worry about those screenings. Um, and then again, too, with, with that high, high percentage of likelihood, I just, you know, it would put my mind at ease to be preventative about the situation. So that was the choice that I made along with my doctor and my genetic counselor. And that's a choice that if you found out you were positive, you would have to make, you know, if with, in your life, if this is something that you feel that you should do or that you feel comfortable doing. Um, so I moved forward and with, with the surgery, the mastectomy and the reconstruction and the videos that I mentioned previously have all that information. And if you're interested in that, like I said before, let me know and you can watch those videos and get a lot more information on my whole process. I mean, I'm not going to say it's easy, but even to this day, I'm very happy and satisfied with the decision that I made. I don't regret it. I'm really happy that I can live feeling reassured that I have dealt with this and I'm not going to have to deal with it in the future. Because now that I've had the mastectomy, um, I've lowered my risk. I think it's like less than a percentage because obviously there's no breast tissue. So, I mean, no real breast tissue there anymore. So, um, so I feel really good about the fact that I was preventative um, and I, I made that decision. Everyone's decision is their own personal choice. And so you will do what's best for you after your research. And I did what was best for me after the research that I did. Now, before being BRCA positive, finding this all out, you may wonder, what did I know about this? Well, I really didn't know much. The only time I'd ever heard about this mutation was in the media surrounding uh, Angelina Jolie because she is positive for the mutation and she went forward with both of the surgeries, the uh, hysterectomy and the mastectomy. And so she has been very open with her decision to do those surgeries. And so I had kind of heard about it through her um, and just uh, the media coverage surrounding that. Um, but other than that, I didn't know. And that's why when you know that you have a family history, it's really important that you start to do some research and potentially get this test so that you know how you should move forward with this. And like I said before, and I think I'm probably gonna really overstate this in this video, but knowledge is power. Knowing this might be scary if you're positive, but it is powerful to have this piece of information that you can use to your benefit and, to, and you can use it to be proactive about your future. Something that um, people sometimes freak out about is the cost of these surgeries. Uh, by law, insurances are required to cover someone who is pat positive for the BRCA mutation in the same way that they would someone who's been diagnosed with breast cancer um, or ovarian cancer. Uh, the reason being is it, it's a lot cheaper actually for them to cover the preventative surgeries and the preventative care than when and if you end up with cancer in the future. And I know that there's an, a, an official document that you can take um, to your insurance company if they were ever to question 
this, but most of them don't. I think it's pretty much nowadays cut and dry with that. Um, but if anyone needs more information, obviously I'm not an insurance expert and everyone has different insurance, but if someone's really confused and needs that document or needs more information, you can message me about that and I can give you whatever I know. But again, it's so personal and I'm not an expert, so don't expect me to like be dealing with your insurance company or anything like that. I think that's about all for this video, guys. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to post them below. I would consider doing a follow-up video, a Q&A about BRCA um, if there's enough interest. And, um, you know, if you want to ask me a question privately, feel free to do that as well. It does not need to be a public thing. Um, I hope that if you're dealing with this, you have peace in, in all of this knowledge, and I hope that you can make the best decision for yourself moving forward. All right, guys, I hope that you have a fabulous day, and I will talk to you later.